It's great to see you on HTBB Online. I'm Priscilla. And I want to speak to you today about being gifted. I'm not sure if you've ever watched the movie called Gifted. Now, if you haven't, then spoiler alert. It's a story of seven-year-old math prodigy called Mary Adler. Her uncle wanted her to have a normal life, so he sent her to regular elementary school. And on the first day of school, Mary was bored to death at math class. Two plus two equals four? Are you kidding me? Mary said out loud. So her teacher got her to stand and solve complicated mathematical equations like 1,200 times 465 without a calculator. And instantly, Mary got it. I mean, I don't even know the answer to that. But if you do, I want you to type it into the chat and our online chat host will let you know if you got the right answer. Now, when her uncle came to pick her up from school, Mary's teacher ran towards him and said, I think your child might be gifted. See, by the end of the story, Mary went on to pursue a career in mathematics. You see, we as followers of Jesus, we are all like Mary Adler's in the kingdom of God. Each of us are born on purpose for a purpose. But this purpose which God has prepared for us cannot be fulfilled with just our natural abilities. So how then do we fulfill God's purposes for our lives? Now, it's true the Holy Spirit, your Father in heaven, has put inside of you spiritual gifts to empower you to fulfill your God-given destinies. You are gifted. Now, our reading today is from 1 Corinthians 12, verse 12 to 27. Now here, Paul was speaking to the Corinthian church concerning spiritual gifts. And he used the analogy of a body having many parts to describe how all our gifts play a part in the kingdom of God. So we're going to read that together. Verse 12. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, Jews are great, slaves are free, and all were made to drink of one spirit. For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. And if the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would be the sense of hearing? And if the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? Guys, can you imagine you being an eye just walking around? You only have one function. The closest character I can think of is Mike Wazowski from Monster Sting. And even he had hands, feet and ears. Paul continues to say in verse 18, But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as He chose. If all were a single member, where would, we, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. Verse 27, Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. Now the First thing we learn from this passage is you are not a bench player. Now, what do I mean by that? Now, in sports, substitute players get put on the bench. They are reserve players who didn't make the main match squad. And normally, they are less skilled than the main players. Now, you, you guys are probably more sporty than me. But whenever I ended up in a sports team, my position was always the bench. So during the game, bench players wait eagerly and cheer on the sidelines instead of being knee-deep in the action. Their only chance of being in the game is when an on-field player is either too tired or not having a good game that day or gets injured. Now, I recall there's this inspirational moment at the 2014 FIFA World Cup where Germany's Mario Goetze was on the bench during the finals. 
he came on towards the end of the game for German legend Miroslav Klose and he played his heart out, scored the winning goal in extra time, securing Germany's first World Cup in 20 years. But in some games, substitute players may not play at all. Do you perhaps see yourself as a substitute player in the kingdom of God? You watch on the sidelines instead of being where the action is. And maybe you think, um, I'm not good enough, or I don't think I can make the cut. I don't know what my gifts are, or if God has even gifted me. And maybe you wonder sometimes if God has put you on the bench because of your past. Or you want to be in the action, but you don't know where you fit in. There seems to be already 11 players on the football field and it looks like there is no place for you. Well, the good news is that's not how God sees you. Paul makes it really clear in the passage we read earlier that though the body is many parts, each part plays a special function. Now, when you think about it, our fingers can do what our nose cannot do. Our nose can do things that our ears cannot do. And our ears can do things that our stomach cannot do. And in the same way, God has gifted you uniquely to do things in a way that no one else can. Ephesians 4.10 tells us, For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So Jesus has crafted these good works for you to do even before you were born. Isn't that amazing? And He said that you should walk in them. Now, when you consider this, our natural bodies, when one part of the body is injured, it affects the whole function of the entire body, right? But when our body is functioning at 100%, we are at our best. And it's the same with the church. When all of us walk in our individual calling and gifting, the church is at its best in playing our part in the evangelization of the nation and transformation of society. Paul says, now you are the body of Christ. There are no such thing as bench players in the kingdom of God. You have a unique part to play to bring God's kingdom here on earth in your homes, your school, your campuses, your workplaces. And that includes industries like media, the government, medical, education, economy, family, arts and entertainment and the church where the gospel is preached, healing breaks in and lives get touched and transformed by the love of God through your life life. Now, perhaps for many of us, the struggle is finding out what we are gifted at. Sometimes it's easier to pinpoint what we are not gifted at. Now, if you're in that place, God wants to help you discover your gifts. Now, I grew up in a tiny Baptist church in Klang. And as a youth, I had no idea what I was gifted at. I wasn't particularly outstanding in any way. I couldn't even get a star on the board from memorizing a Bible verse at Sunday school. So my youth leaders encouraged me to try many different things. I was the 13-year-old at the OHP projector projecting worship song lyrics. I know some of you listening are too young to even know what an OHP projector is. I was the, also the person doing actions during kids' rallies. And guys, songs back then weren't as cool as what we have now in HDBB, okay? Like force field, force field. I was doing, give me all in my lamb, keep me burning, burning. I know, if you know that song, why don't you make it less lonely for me and put a fire emoji into the chat right now. Over time, I got involved in a district inter-school Christian fellowship and just really enjoyed serving through the church. It's what I'm doing today and I'm still in the process of discovering other gifts that God has put in me. Now, if you're not sure what your gifts are, the question is, how do you discover them? Part of discovering your gifts is asking the right questions to yourself and the people around you. What are you naturally good at? What energizes you? 
What are you drawn to? Or who are you drawn to? But I'll say this, at the end of the day, there are no formulas to discovering your gifts. Although there are some tools to help you find out what you are good at, like some of the questions I just posed. Because when it comes to discovering what has been supernaturally put in you, you've got to go to the Creator who created you. It takes God's involvement to discover your gifts. So what do you do? You diligently seek Him for it. Keep asking, Jesus says, and you will receive. Keep seeking and you will find. God will and longs to reveal the unique gifts He has put inside of you. Now, throughout this week, we'll be releasing a midweek YouTube content on the spiritual gifts that our scriptures have mentioned, like words of knowledge and prophecy, gifts of administration, tongues, healing, service, and leadership. I'd love for you to check it out. And during the video, we take a moment to pray for you to receive these gifts. And we pray that it will help you on your journey to discovering your God-given gifts. Now, once you've discovered your gifts, you've got to develop your gifts. See, my husband Josh and I got a personal trainer that helps us get fit three times a week. The first few times he trained us, man, I got to be honest, it was absolute torture. It made us have thoughts like, gosh, we paid this guy to torture us a couple of times a week. He made us work out muscles we probably have never strengthened before. And after each workout, we needed a whole day to recover. I used to use this 0.5 kg weight to exercise one of my back muscles. Mm -hmm. you, you heard it right. It's, it's 0 0.5, not 5.0. My, my friend actually thought it was decoration at my house. Over time, as we persevered through those sessions, our muscles became stronger. We could sustain longer planks, carry heavier weights. We were more energetic and our recovery time was far shorter. Now, it's the same with developing the muscle of your gifts. The gift in itself possesses potential to make an impact, but potential is only where it begins. Paul said in, to, to Timothy in 1 Timothy 4, do not neglect the gift you have, which, which was given you by prophecy when the council of elders laid their hands on you. Practice this thing, immerse yourself in them so that all may see your progress. And later in another letter, Paul reminded Timothy again, for this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Now, as you train the muscle of your gifts, and you may start with, I know, 0 0.5 kgs like me, you practice and you fan it into flame, you give yourself wholly to it. The gift turns from potential into impact for God's kingdom. Your gifts grow from exercising them and not just leaving it dormant. And I tell you, there's going to be days like what Josh and I felt during our physical training, where you feel the pain and the cost of developing those gifts. And you may ask, you may even ask God, is this even worth it? Now, if you're in that place, I believe God wants to assure you that it will develop your character and it's going to strengthen your faith, which the Bible says is more precious than gold. See, for me, when I visited HTBB in 2016, Annette Miller, who was the former vicar of HTB in London, she gave me a prophetic word and said that God will begin to use me in the area of evangelism and that there'll be many people who comes to know Jesus through my life. When I heard that, I'm like, God, you got the wrong girl. <laughs> I definitely didn't see myself as a Billy Graham or neither was I involved in any work of evangelism at that point. So fast forward to 2018, um, I came on staff and, at, on, with Alpha Asia Pacific. And yes, some of you would know, Alpha is an evangelistic tool that gives people an opportunity to discover and develop a relationship with Jesus. My role at Alpha is not like Billy Graham, but really to serve the Alpha National Officers in the region behind the scenes. 
involves mainly sitting behind a computer, especially since COVID, to work on strategy and product development, finance, project management, and cross-cultural team management. There were some areas like finance that I was not a natural at. Like guys, when I see lots of numbers, I just see stars. Like clearly, I'm no math prodigy. There were some of the areas that I was more inclined to, but the context of Alpha was new to me. So for the last couple of years, from behind the scenes, I really needed to give myself to practice, learning new things, relearning some things in COVID times, get feedback, receive corrections, and practice some more. You see, even though a gift was imparted in me through a net's word, I still needed to develop that gift and I'm still developing it today so that I can serve the kingdom of God effectively. People always say practice makes perfect, right? And th that is true. But I also say this, our practice to develop our gifts in the secret determines the measure of our public impact. And I'll say that again, our practice to develop our gifts in the secret determines the measure of our public impact. So don't just stop at discovering your gifts. You've got to develop your gifts. So we've learned that all of us are gifted and we are not bench players in the kingdom of God and God wants to help us discover our gifts and then we've got to develop it. Now I'll end with this that one of the things that could stop us from discovering or developing our gifts is comparison. You see, when Paul spoke to the Corinthian church in a passage we read, there was a culture of elevating certain types of gifts to the point that those without those gifts felt like they weren't part of the body. It created division among them. And just like the Corinthian church, it's easy for us to fall into the trap of comparing which are the more premium gifts. And often we think the most important gifts are the ones that are seen on the platform. Just think about it in the context of our human body. We often pay attention to what we see on the outside, right? Oh, that person has great facial features or strong arms. But on the inside, they are vital organs keeping the body alive and functioning. Paul says this in verse 21, The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. And on the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. So you who have been serving in the secret, you've been behind the computer serving, or you've been reaching the unreached group of people in the secret, you are indispensable. Kingdom work happens everywhere, not just in church or on stage or HTBB online. So you who have been using your gifts in the marketplace, you are indispensable to bring the kingdom of God into your sphere of influence. And especially now that we can't gather in the church building in Bukit Bintang, you are the church. You are the people called and sent out to make an impact where He has placed you. So when it comes to spiritual gifts, as a body of Christ, this is what we can do. We can swap comparison with celebration. Paul says in verse 23, And on those parts of the body that we think less honourable, we bestow the greater honour, and on our unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty, which our presentable parts do not require. But God has so composed the body, giving greater honour to the part that lacked it, that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have some the same care for one another. So we are called to celebrate, to give honour to each other's gifts, especially the ones that are deemed less obvious. Because these gifts that, we have been free, that has been freely given to us are not meant for us. It's definitely not meant to tear each other down. It's meant to build each other up. 
And in a world that is divisive and so easy for us to get caught up in comparison, the church can live differently by uniting and celebrating one another. Nikki Gumbel said this, I used to look at other types of Christians and ask, what's wrong with them? But these days I ask, what's right with them? What can I learn from them? And what do they have that I need? You see, our unity is not based on us having the exact same gifts or that we behave in exactly the same way or even that we agree on every single thing. Our unity comes from God's unconditional acceptance for who we are and just as we are and that we all belong to the same Father in heaven. We are family. And more than ever, we need unity today because it's so easy for us to feel disconnected from the body of Christ. We haven't been able to see each other the way that we used to. So all the more, friends, let's use our gifts to serve, love, and build each other up. As the Apostle John puts it, if you love one another, God lives in us and His love is made complete in us. Amen. Now, right now, we are going to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to come and fill us. Why don't wherever you are, if you could, you can stand and just put out your hand um, and just bring our lives before the Lord. We're going to pray. Come, Holy Spirit. 